Hello, West Georgia Wolves, and welcome once again to another episode of Reads Real Review. I'm your host, Brittany Reed, and I'm going to be keeping it real. The year 2009 is officially over, and the movies have been going head to head to see which films are going to win which awards. And in this episode of Reads Real Review, we're going to look and see exactly which motion pictures were lucky enough to win the honors of certain categories. We're going to look at two award shows in particular, the Golden Globe Awards and the Critics' Choice Awards. The Golden Globe Awards are usually nominated and voted on in secret until the Golden Globes are aired live during a lavish dinner at a Hollywood location that varies from year to year. This year, the Golden Globe Awards aired on January 17, 2010. The Critics' Choice Awards are bestowed annually by the Broadcast Film Critics Association. Voting is held by a written ballot for a week-long period. Later, the winners are chosen in December, and they are revealed during the Critics' Choice Awards ceremony in January. This year, the Critics' Choice Awards were hosted on January 15, 2010. So now, let's compare the two award ceremonies and see which actors, which films, and which directors won certain categories for their motion pictures. I believe Avatar was an action movie because of all of the war-related battle antics that they had throughout the entire movie. They also had some drama, but it was mostly action if you ask me. I'm Julia Elkins, and I thought it was mostly drama because that's like sort of what made the action part so interesting, the emotional aspects. and I chose drama, and even though I haven't seen the movie, them being blue seems pretty dramatic to me. What is your name? Romeo Silverman. 
Nice to meet you. So, what movie of 2009 did you think was the most interesting or that you would like to give your opinion on the most? Uh, 2009, um, Tyler Perry's Precious. The Princess and the Frog. That was a very good movie. It was good to see a black princess and everything. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, a Law Abiding Citizen, starring Jimmy Fox and. What's his name? Okay. Gerard Butler. <laughs> Gerard Butler. Me personally, I think the scene that really, really touched me was the the very last scene. Um, this is a scene when Precious is at the office, I believe, with her counselor or or something of that nature, and her mother walks into the um, office. And at this time, she's trying to um, reach Precious. Precious has totally disconnected herself from her mother. And it was a point of, it was a breaker point for, for her mother, Monique. It was a breaker point. And um, she expressed how her husband wanted her daughter all throughout their relationship. And how she lived her whole life really being second place as the wife and mother. And in, instead of her reaching out, instead of her reaching out to her daughter, Precious, to say, I'm sorry, I forgive you, she acknowledged she's sorry. But instead of Precious or the counselor or any any role, of Ty, or even Tyler Perry, instead of them bringing in a role that would say, well, I forgive you or I don't forgive you, I have to stay away from you because you're bad for my life, but I'm going to become a part of this organization. I'll do this for my child. They just walk away. Right there, it should have been some type of um, counseling with the county. They should have come in, intervened, um, created some type of way for that to work. Sometimes you have to separate mother, daughters, and children out of each other's life because they just don't fit. It's, it's just not purpose for it to happen. Um, that didn't happen. Instead, that she just walked away, and it went off. This is a time for every young lady who is in that position as precious to say, okay, this is what I'm going to have to do. Precious, show me what I'm going to have to do. I mean, I, I was getting mad. I was crying. I was upset with what was happening to Precious. But I would have been relieved to know that she graduated, to know that she found a place for her and her child. Um, I love the music. And like I said, it was good to see a black, black princess, you know, representing. She did. It was a very good job. Their, both of their characters, the princess and the prince, they both went complimented each other. Yeah, they played out well. Them coming together during the movie as the movie took place and everything like that, um, them being together and her showing him what he needed to work on, and, and he also pointed some things out in her that that she needed to work on as well. I like how the movie just played out. You know, they were, they were, they, I don't want to tell the movie. I don't know if anybody's seen the movie, <laughs> but it's a great movie. It's a great movie. And I like how it just played out. You know, I don't know if I should say the movie, but I had the opportunity to also go to Orlando, Florida, to Disney World, to the Magic Kingdom, mm -hmm. I believe the one I went to. Yeah, Magic Kingdom. And I got to see them do it live. And it was a live princess and a live prince and everything. And everybody that was there, I mean, white, black, Asian, it don't matter. Everybody loved it. They said this was one of the best Disney movies, you know. And I think, I just think that was great. It's, it's awesome when people can come together, you know. And, and I, just, I just think, you know, it was a good move for Disney to do that, you know. And, you know, it just, hopefully, you know, that, tore down some of the walls of racial and racial barriers and everything. I think it did. I think it did. And that's, and that's you know, that, that makes me happy all in itself. You know, this is a good movie that everybody can enjoy, that the kids can enjoy, that families can enjoy. Um, so go and see the movie. <laughs> end of the movie actually had a closing. You know, there was an end to the movie on, like, Precious, uh, where Jimmy Fox leaves the bomb in, in Gerard Butler's room and he gets exploded and I think that was really important to tell teach people that if trying to fix the problems in society uh, by doing bad or by you know trying to fight evil with evil uh, in the end leads to your demise and you know the lessons that you want to teach people never get beyond your own agenda okay and there was that there was that scene when they were talking right before he died when Jamie was saying do you think your daughter and wife would appreciate this and 
that kind of sense of justice in society in a way. So um, what did you think was, was that your favorite scene, the one at the end, or did you have another favorite scene that stood out to you in the movie? That probably was my favorite scene, that whole sequence of scenes leading up to that point when they find his cave and it, it just, it's a brilliant idea for him to have that. But um, that, that, that was a very interesting scene because he had this idea of retribution for his family, but within his agenda, he removed his family and then put himself in place. Um, I think that was very interesting, having him think of, does my family really want this as retribution or do they want me to pursue a more, I guess, legal role? Yeah. With, what are your names? Uh, Sarah Grimal. Sarah and? Tessa Grimal. <laughs> Tessa. Okay, so are you guys twins? Yeah. Okay, cool. No, that's really, really neat. So this game, they're going to have to write down an estimate of the number that they think is closest to the right answer. And let's see if you guys can get the answer right at home as well. The animated motion picture Up was nominated as the best animated feature for 2009. But how much money did it cost to actually make the film? Your hint is that the answer is somewhere in the millions. So if you two write down your answers now, whoever is the closest will be the winner of this competition. Okay, uh huh, let's see. Okay, five million and 43 million. Okay, well, the movie Up, it cost $175 million to make. So, you are the winner. Congratulations. And for participating, her sister will win a Reads Will Review Movie Cup. Thank you, guys. Now it is time to see whether the students of the University of West Georgia believed that Avatar was a dramatic film or an action film. Let's tally up the votes. One vote for drama. One vote for action. Two votes for action. Two votes for drama. The last vote is for drama. That means the students of the University of West Georgia believe that Avatar was more of a dramatic film than an action film. And so, Avatar, as a result of this, you will receive the Reads Real Review Award as the Best Dramatic Motion Picture of the Year 2009. Well, that does it for another episode of Reads Real Review. I would like to thank all of my guests and my contestants for participating in this week's episode. Be sure to look out for Reads Will Review every Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. and every Saturday at 11 on Channel 13 here in Carrollton. Also, always be on the lookout for me and my camera crew. If we catch you and you participate in one of my games or you give your opinion during one of my interviews, you could get a megaphone, a cup, or you could get a movie buff trophy for knowing your movie trivia. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay tuned because I'm going to show you which movies are now available on DVD and Blu-ray for you to take home and purchase for your enjoyment. Until next time, I'm Brittany Reed and I'm keeping it real.